Uh, hi, my name is Alex. Um, I have a regular job at Over Energy where I'm a web dev. But part of what I do in my spare time is I volunteer for Mozilla and I'm a Mozilla Reps mentor. What that means is I help, I'm a volunteer that helps other people volunteer. Uh, we, I, I want to talk to, to you today about DevTools and Firefox DevTools. No, Firefox DevTools does not mean Firebug. I, I, I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, I want to see how many, uh, how, how many people use Firefox in the room. Wow, good. For developing, like Firefox and uh, the DevTools they come with. Fewer hands, OK. Uh, Chrome DevTools? A lot more. OK, that's, that's understandable. How about Internet Explorer DevTools? <laughs> One lowly hand in the back. OK, OK. Good. Uh, wh what I want to show you today uh, can be done across all dev tools. Mostly, uh, what I have here today is on par with them or slightly better. Uh, it's part of my, uh, my development workflow day to day. Uh, first of all, here's my, uh, my attempt at the blog. It doesn't look really well because I'm really picky about it and I want to change stuff. If I want to open up the DevTools in Firefox, I just right click and do inspect element. So I zoomed the DevTools and I zoomed the, I zoomed the page, but I can't zoom the context menu. You're going to have to try uh, to, to, to trust me. It says inspect element in here. But that opens up to a random element. And what I want to change is this button here. So I have everything is kind of. My icon is blue. I want my, uh, my button to be blue as well. I could just right click the element and inspect it, but that doesn't help me out every time. And I have a cool new feature in DevTools called Search. And I can, can actually press Command F, and it's going to open up the search bar here. And I can use CSS selectors to search what I want for. I know it's a button that I want to change. So uh, I know it's called MDL-button. So I'm going to search for that. In case I'm, I'm not really sure, I have a whole list of things autocomplete. I'm just going to go MDL button here. And you see it selects other, other stuff because I have four different matches. It, if I just press Enter, it's going to cycle through them and select them here in the inspector. Now, I want to make my button blue. But there's a lot of styling here, a lot of styling. I can't be bothered to, to search through all the styles. And I just want to you know, filter for color, because I, I know I want to change the color of the button. So I'm going to just filter and say I'm looking for something that says color. And everything that has color in it, it's going to basically highlight for me. So I want to change the color of the button. And I'm going to do, I'm gonna do blue, because I want my button to be blue. Cool. I have it. I have it. Already, I can see it on the screen. It's normal. But I you saw before that it was red in, in a red, green, blue format. It wasn't really blue. And I have no idea how to convert blue to any other format, not even hex. Uh, and I'm, I basically want to, my style guide, the, the team I work with, likes to be everything the same way. We, work, we kind of like to have a, a, the same language. So how do I convert blue to something else, some other color representation? Normally, I'd have to go online, find a converter, and just do it. Um, now I have a little, a little dot in here that shows me the color. If I shift click on it, it's going to change representations and show me all available representations for that color. Now, this is blue. This is a simple color. So I have four different representations, hex, red, green, blue, and whatever. But for some other stuff, um, I, don't, I won't have this, that many because they, uh, they have alpha in them. Uh, if I, so I chose a, a basic color, which is blue. But I want something a tad bit more fancy. I kind of need a color picker at this point. I have no idea what I want. I want to try things out. How do I do that? Well, I go to the same little color dot, and I simple click on it. And then a color picker opens up. And I'm going to try different colors until something looks good. Uh, I'm not really good with colors, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this little tool here that's going to allow me to go on my image and match my color against my image. So that, yeah, that's good. Now that I, uh, I change my, uh, my, my color, when I hover over it, there's this gray background that I don't really like. Like, it's, it's a different color from the text, 
you should know it's a button. I don't want a hover state on it. But when I try to do something with it, I can't really do anything. Because as soon as I hover over it, hover off of it, there's no, nothing for me to inspect anymore. But I can fix that. I can go on my element and say, force hover state. And then it's every time it has a hover state. And then now I can go to my, uh, my background and try to change it. As I said, this color has transparency, so an alpha layer. That means there's only two available representations for it. Uh, I don't really want color, so I'm going to say white. Match my ba background. And now there's no, no more background to it. And once I'm done with it, I'm just going to deactivate hover state, and it's back to normal. Yes, no more hover effect. Uh, I changed, I changed my, uh, my, my styles and all that, but web development isn't only about HTML and CSS. I use JavaScript fairly regular in my, uh, in my job and day to day. So I kind of want to edit out JavaScript as well. As you can see, when I spelled my name, I was a tad bit enthusiastic about speaking in that talks. So my name has a lot of S's strapped to it. And I kind of want to figure out where in the code this bug comes from, and I want to basically fix it. So I'm going to go to the debugger. And the debugger shows me every JavaScript file I have, which are quite a lot. And I have no idea where, where my code lives or where I did that. Uh, but I'm just going to search for it. I can do command P. And uh, this nice li little bubble pops up. I have multiple choices when I search through files. Like I can search through all files, uh, function definitions, or in this file, or go to a certain line, or stuff like that. I have no idea which file I'm in, so I'm going to search in all my files. And since I wrote the code a while back, I remember it's something to do with the console. So I'm going to search for all console instances. And I see a list in here. And it shows me this. So I'm using, I define myself as an object. And then I'm using object properties to define the console log. But I'm not really sure that, now I already have three properties. And it's kind of easy to, to see. But I want to inspect my me element from the start. So I'm going to go briefly and change my code. And I'm trying to do like I'm trying to do to log the me object and they say I am plus me. Anyone knows what that's going to log out? Nope. It's going to log I am an object. Uh, hopefully the gods of Wi-Fi still work and this isn't going to die on me. Yes, so it says I'm an object. I know I'm an object, and some people do call me a tool. But still, I want to, f to find out about the me metadata in there. So I don't really want to. It's not helpful to, to see object, object. What the hell is that? And I can change that. I can say, instead of plus me, I can say comma me. And that's going to actually log I am and then the object. And if I go and refresh, it's going to say I am and then an object with definition about it, metadata, everything in there. I'm going to go and change it, uh, change it back for a while. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change my name to look proper. Yes. So now it's back and it's fixed. Uh, now. A lot of you guys uh, say, why did you have to go through your editor and do that? I got a lot of questions about this. Well, I'm, I'm, when I started out with JavaScript, uh, you didn't really have dev tools or you know, debug points. But now I can just go and say, hey, this is the line that offended me. I'm going to debug it, stop it, and then when it gets there with the execution, I'm gonna, it's going to stop executing. It acts like a any of you Java devs? Java devs. Enough Java devs. It acts like a, like a Java debugger. And I'm going to uh, be able to add watch to my expressions. It gives me a lot of information about the function that I'm running, uh, the options I run it with, the arguments, what's the value of the me object, so I can check out who me is. I can actually change this on the fly.
and if the gods of demos work, this should be reflected when I press play. Yeah, it's reflected when I press play. Um, well, when it comes to web developing, um, I, I, I did CSS, HTML, I did JavaScript, but I have a pesky manager which wants, uh, that wants everything to be really fast, really perfect, so I have to work with other stuff in the meantime. Like, I usually have to go to network and inspect something in the network. Uh, here you're going to see all the, the network traffic my app is doing, and you're going to see um, the, the most important thing I look at is right here, this one says transfer size, and this says actual size on disk. So that means even though this is a, a quite a big CSS file, on transfer, it takes roughly one-fifth of its size. So it's not really important for me. The transfer happens so fast that I don't have to worry about space on disk. You can do more than just this. Like, this isn't helpful for me, especially since I don't know what he spent, uh, like how much it took for him to download that. I have a rough estimate here, but I have no idea on various, various phases of the, the whole transfer protocol. And if I go and click on it, I'm going to see a lot of information about it, the headers, the response, what, what I'm getting basically. And then I have something called timings. And this is going to show me, because I'm local, it's going to show me DNS resolution connection and sending happened instantly. It waited for a while for my file to, 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 to come from my server, because I'm running Jekyll and that's kind of slow. And then the receiving part took virtually nothing, again, because I'm local. But he waited around until my, uh, my, basically my browser communicated with my server. Uh, one of the other, the, the other tools in the DevTools that I use regularly is called the storage. Uh, tab that basically me shows me what cookies I'm using, index DB, local storage, cache storage, basically everything I need to know about uh, about storage. Now during my uh, my uh, my break, I was talking uh, about this with one of the the other Mozilla guys, and he said, "Hey, you know what? I use that, but I kind of wish I could edit uh, cookies in browser, and right now I can't do that." It's just going to show me a lot of information about my cookies, but there's no way to add it like in, in other, uh, in other uh, instances, like for network and everything else I can add it in place. What I showed you is the, the regular version of Firefox. So it's the latest Firefox, for Firefox 47, and I use this uh, for the development quite a lot, but for some stuff, uh, I want the features that are coming into the DevTools and that are being worked on. So Mozilla created a while back something called the Firefox Developer Edition. I have that installed, and I'm going to open that up. Because what happens is the, th the stuff that's shipping to developers, we as developers understand that, hey, maybe my browser is a bit broken now, uh, but I have great tooling around it. Even if it's not as stable as I'm used to, I'm not the end user, I'm just the developer. When I want to feel like the end user, I'm going to go to regular Firefox. When I want to feel like a developer, and need actual tools, better tools, I'm going to go here. The way Moz the Mozilla processes work is they ship everything in Firefox DevTools 12 weeks ahead of them going to release. That means we have a lot of time to test them out and see if they're uh, ready for larger consumption. But some of the stuff in here is just too good, not to, too, too good to pass it up. I'm going to do Google, and I'm going to open up my DevTools. So you see I have the same storage, uh, storage tab here. And here, if I actually go to a value and double click the value, I can change it. I can mess around with cookies uh, and whatever I have in storage. Uh, I was talking about the network earlier and timings. Uh, when I first open up the network, I have to reload the page. Basically, so the we, we, some of the dev tools we don't um, instantiate or activate for everyone just because you wouldn't need them. And the memory monitor is kind of memory hogging, so you don't really want that unless you're a developer and want to test some out. So I'm going to reload so it powers up my, uh, my network storage. Let's see which is the biggest ones, one here. So I can go to one of the, the requests Google makes, a JavaScript file. And if I look at timings, I see 
the DNS connection and resolution happen quite fast, but then he waited around for half the time and then got the file in half the time. This is one of the, the usual cases when you're running from servers who have wide availability, uh, but in here there's something called JStatic, which is on uh, GStatic, which is on the other side of the world. That means in connecting to it and actually trying to find it out, it takes eight milliseconds. The, the, the receiving end is instantly, but I lose four times more just on the fact that I'm connecting. I can solve this easily by having a CDN, which is in your availability zones or stuff like that, but I have no idea about that until, until I start looking at network performance in my dev tools. Uh, one of the other things we have is called settings. And whenever I install the new version of, of DevTools, I usually go to, to options. Because in here, we have a lot more than what I showed you. You can play around with them and activate them if you want to try them out. Like We have something for shaders. We have Canvas, uh, memory performance, web audio. Uh, Scratchpad is basically a JavaScript editor inside the browser. DOM manipulation. One of my... Uh, my favorite is the themes. Like th when I have two instances of Firefox running and I'm using dev tools in both of them, I have no idea which one's it, which. I can't be bothered to check out. So I use the light theme for one of them and then the dark theme for the other. And it's easy for me to, to see which one's which. At the beginning, I said dev tools isn't Firebug, but a lot of us started using Firebug, started with dev tools as Firebug way back when. Uh, and Every once in a while, I get nostalgic about it. And now we added something called the Firebug team that makes my dev tools look like the old Firebug just because it's something I'm used to and like to see in a while. One of the other things I use when developing, uh, it's down here somewhere. And it's basically disable caching when the toolbox is open. So when the dev tools is open, it's going to disable caching for me by default. How many of you people had problems with caching and having to reload your website three times exactly until you figure out, hey, it's cached, and even though I, I'm, I'm making changes every time, I get the same answer? That's, I think Einstein said that's the definition of insanity. Uh, still, there's a lot more things happening in, in, uh, in DevTools. For example, I can use DevTools to debug other browsers. I think I'm running out of time, so I don't have time to show you that. But if you want to go, you have remote debugging, and you, you can actually debug your Chrome browser with the Firefox DevTools. And with that, I think I'm done. Uh, I thank you all. And if you have questions, I'm going to be outside. And we have a booth somewhere in there. Uh, if you want to come say hi, we can talk about DevTools and geek out. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Uh, just a sec, before I leave. We still I want have to plenty of time, though, so take uh, your no. time. I want to have a selfie on stage before you I leave. You want to have a selfie on stage? Yes. Well, you're going to have that. You can have you join me for my selfie. No, That's I'm going to be in the audience with all yes. the other people. That's perfect. It's not, it, it's not an event if there's no selfie on stage. Yes. Say hi. I'm exactly not in it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We're, we're going to try this again. Yes, you're in it? Yes, you're yeah, in it. Yeah, that shiny object, that's me. <laughs> uh, maybe next time. The camera doesn't love you. Thank you. Okay, so any questions? Come on, there's got to be a lot of questions about this because this is all the cool web stuff. Oh, we've got one over there. There's a microphone coming your way. Um, you've presented the... the the new features of the uh, Firefox DevTools, and uh, I've used um, Firebug quite a lot in the past. And uh, recently, I, I've uh, well, I don't know if it's the right place to, to say this, but I've gone to um, Chrome Developer Tools. So, uh, can you point me three what what are, in your opinion, three crucial uh, features that? Uh, Firefox DevTools um, has and the Chrome Developer Tools have hasn't. Okay, so so what what are the my, the most the most important features? I mean, crucial things. Like in my opinion, the most important features that Firefox has and Chrome hasn't are, are better in Firefox. As when I try to edit CSA, all I, all it takes is a click. I don't have to double click. I'm a developer and I'm a performance engineer. I kind of look at these things. The fact that I can edit with a click and I don't need double click, that's a big win for me. 
The other stuff is we have here something called web audio, and that shows me a web audio editor. I have no web audio in my page, uh, but I used to work with web audio quite a lot in the time when basically web audio was beginning as a spec, so that, that's not there. And I think the third thing is we have something called uh, web ID, which is basically if I'm on, on a new computer and I have no idea about the ID and stuff like that and I want to change something, instead of having to install idea or whatever, I have an ID for web apps right here in the browsers. I just go and say, I want a web ID to change this little piece of JavaScript. When I do things on stage, instead of you know using an editor or my, my editor craps out or it's the organizer's computer, that helps me out a lot. And with that, I think there were three. Okay, I think that's it on the time. Thank you very much. Give him a one big last round of applause. <laughs>